Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhad. In this session, we would look at IAS 19, which is employee benefit, and we'll work a few examples. Specifically, I'm going to be working with defined benefit plans, or to be more specific, we're going to be dealing with pension. To be more specific, we're going to be looking at two compo the, the two components of pension, and hopefully you remember them from the prior session, the net benefit obligation and the defined, this is the balance sheet account, and we're going to look at the income statement account, the defined benefit cost. Those are the two components. One, two. This is a balance sheet account. This is an income statement account. Again, as always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have over 1,500 plus accounting, auditing, and tax lectures. If you like my lectures, if you like my the way I teach, please like them, share them, put them in the playlist. If you're benefiting, it means other people other people might benefit as well. Share the wealth. This is my Instagram account. I'm trying to grow my Instagram account. Please help me grow my Instagram account. This is my Facebook account, and this is my website. On my website, if you chose to, you can contribute to the channel to support the channel. Also, on my website, I do offer uh services for example right now i do have an offer from c from becker cpa review one thousand dollar off of the becker bundle all four parts of the cpa exam with unlimited access this is unheard of usually becker don't give you unlimited access but they're doing so now it means you have access as long as you need it if you are planning to sit for the exam i strongly suggest you go for it even if you're a college student you can supplement your college studies by utilizing your multiple choice exercises, simulations, and hundreds of hours lectures from qualified Becker faculty. Let's take a look at a few examples. Remember, every time I say examples, it means I covered the topic already. So look at the prior session. Let's take a look at this example. K Trucking Company has a defined pension benefit, defined benefit pension plan on December 31st, the following information is available. They have the fair value of the plan asset, the present value of the defined obligation, service cost, interest cost, actuarial gains, past service cost. Determine the amount that the company should report on the balance sheet. Well, for this plan under IFRS. Easy. What goes on the balance sheet? What goes on the balance sheet? is the present value of the defined benefit obligation minus the fair value of the asset. If we have more assets and liabilities, we have an asset. If we have more liabilities than asset, we have we have a liability. Therefore, what are the assets? So basically, all this information is irrelevant. All we care about is those two figures. The fair value of the plan is, well, let's start with the liability. The liabilities is 38 million, which is the present value of the defined benefit obligation. The fair value of the assets, 30 million. So we have, in a sense, a liability or, or net defined liability of 8 million, 8 million, and it's a liability. Let's assume on January 1st, the this company made an amendment to its defined pension plan resulting in 150,000 in past service cost. The plan has 100 active employees with an average expected remaining working life of 10 years. There are currently no retirees under the plan. Determine the amount of past service costs to be amortized under IFRS. Well, easy. If this question, if you're given this questions on the CPA exam, you'll be nothing to be amortized. The whole 150,000 will be expense. Well, what about US GAAP? Under US GAAP, this is what you would amortize. We have $150,000 in plan amendment. We're going to divide this by 10, and every year we're going to expense 15,000. Simply put, the 150,000 goes into OCI. Then from OCI, 15,000 of it is released to expense for the next 10 years. Let's take a look at this example. De determine the amount of the defined benefit cost. This is what we're talking about the expense for the current year to be reported in net income and other comprehensive income. So they want you to define benefit cost, the net income component and the other comprehensive income component. We looked at this earlier in the, in the other session. So let's see if we know how to do this. Let's first take a look at the defined benefit cost. What goes under the defined benefit cost? 
Well, let's first see what we are giving. We are giving the obligation, we are giving the assets, we are giving the service cost for the current year, we are giving the actuarial gain for the current year, we are giving the actual return on plan asset. Something we didn't I didn't really cover. I mean I didn't really cover in this session, but I covered it in my pension. And the effective yield on high quality bond. Okay. So what is the defined benefit cost? Remember the defined benefit cost would include let's let me highlight them for you. Let me get my highlighter here. Come on, let's go. Okay, it will include the service. It would inc it will include. Come on. It would include. There we go. It would include the service cost, which is fifty thousand dollar. It would include past or prior service cost. There is no prior service cost. It would include net interest cost. We're not given net interest cost. We have to compute net interest cost. So now we're going to go back and determine what's our net interest cost. Remember, for the net interest cost, we're going to take the liability, $1 million. This is the liability. And this liability, we're going to be using a discount rate of 5%. So the interest expense on the obligation is $50,000. Then we have assets. The assets are $800,000. And those gonna generate interest income at at five percent. It means they're gonna generate forty thousand dollar of income. This is interest income. This is interest expense. The difference between them is a net interest expense of ten thousand. Net interest expense of ten ten thousand. Therefore, the defined benefit cost is fifty thousand, which is the current service cost plus 10,000, we have no prior service cost or past service cost. This is the expense that goes on the income statement. Now, we need to compute the other comprehensive income. What goes on the other comprehensive income, which is the remeasurement? Well, actuarial gain and losses, we talked about this, actuarial gain and losses, it means when we have a change in estimate, let me just now go back and highlight the figures that goes there. Let me see. Actuarial gain and losses, and and actuarial. Not, not, we don't we don't call them actuarial, but the difference between the actual return and the expected return. What what does that mean? Remember when I computed this forty thousand dollar here? I said this is the expected return. How did I compute the expected return? It's my assets, fair value of the assets, and they're gonna earn they're gonna earn five percent. So. This is the expected. And this is how you compute the expected. Well, guess what? This is the expected. The actual was 55. The difference between the expected and the actual goes into OCI, goes into do and goes into the remeasurement. And how much is that? Well, obviously that's 15,000. Also, what could go there is the change in the effect of the asset ceiling, which we don't have asset ceiling here. Simply put, what goes into OCI? The 8,000, the actuarial gain, plus 15,000, the excess between the actual return and the expected return, in total, we're going to park an OCI, 23,000. And remember, this number is never recycled, is never recycled into OCI. And you will be saying, okay, if they're, they're never recycled, would it, would it sit there forever? And the answer is not really. Here's why. This year, we happen to have an actuarial gain. Maybe next year we might have an actuarial loss. And as a result, the 23 will go down. Because remember, this is a balance sheet. It stays. This year we had an actual return of 55 and the expected is 40. Next year we could have an expected of 40 and actual of only 20. Or if, let's make it 15. Only, only 15. Only 15. Okay? Therefore, we're going to have a loss. I keep present to the share based payment which I'm coming to it shortly okay so now we have a loss okay so that's why it's on OCI so sometimes it goes up sometimes it goes down and on average it's gonna its average will be zero that's that's the hope it has no effect that's why we don't take it to the income statement because in some years it's gonna be a gain in some years it's in some years gonna be positive in some years negative in some years gains and some year losses they will cancel each other out if you have any questions, please email me. If you're happy to be studying for your CPA exam, study hard. If you happen to visit my website for additional or YouTube for my additional lectures or lessons, please consider donating. Good luck and see you on the other side of success.